so this is going to be goal setting, how to start, develop, and achieve your goals. Um, and so I wanted to just do a quick um, presentation, sorry, a quick <laughs> introduction to who we are um, and who will be presenting today. Um, Danya, did you want to introduce yourself first? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Danya. I um, I run the People, Strategy, Customer Success, and Business Operations teams here at Kazoo, um, and uh, excited to chat with you all about goal setting. I'm a very passionate person um, who is very passionate about setting their goals, and I am very goal-oriented, so this is definitely very near and dear to my heart. Yes, yes, thank you, Danya. Um, and I'm Ellie Brasher. I'm the manager of people culture over here at Kazoo. Um, that is uh, what's considered human resources now. And um, if Teal didn't give you a, a precursor to um, who we are, as in Kazoo, we're a, an HR software company that works in employee engagement and performance management. So we do actually a lot of goal setting trainings for our own internal company and employees. So um, hopefully we can use these skills to help you all as well. So I'll jump right into today's agenda. Um, so we'll talk, we'll touch on what is a goal very briefly, uh, why are goals important, smart goal setting, um, so the smart goal setting method, uh, during the goal process, and goal setting tips. So we'll start with what is a goal? So a goal is an idea of the future or a desired result that a person or a group of people envision, plan, and commit to achieve. Um, so it sounds like a pretty simple idea in and of itself. Of course, we'll expand upon the different portions of, of goal setting and why goal setting is important as an individual, um, but I do love this definition of what a goal is. Uh, and then why are goals important to an individual? So goals are important to an individual for a variety of reasons. Um, I've just listed out these, these couple bullet points just because they um, are the you know, rounded out version of why they're so important. Um, so first of all, setting goals gives you focus. So you're able to concentrate on what you're trying to achieve. You're able to define what you're trying to achieve and work towards doing that. They allow you to measure your progress. So if you're keeping everything documented, you're setting this goal for yourself, you're, you're setting these measurable results in, an, in this goal, um, you're able to kind of mark those off. So almost like check boxes, you're able to measure that progress as you progress through your goal. They establish mental boundaries. So they help you keep, help keep you focused. Um, so having that defined goal and being able to look at your goal and remind yourself what you're trying to achieve um, really helps keep you, keep you focused on, on really succeeding in that goal. Uh, you have accountability, accountability to finish. Um, so you know, you're not necessarily being held accountable by anyone but yourself. And so being able to write this goal out, um, you're the one that's keeping yourself accountable to really, really succeed in this goal setting process. Uh, and then last but not least, personal, personal motivation. Um, Danya, was there anything you wanted to add into this slide for why goals are important to an individual before I move on? No, that's everything. Awesome, thank you. So smart goal setting. Um, so smart goal setting is one of the most popular goal setting systems and it can be used um, scaled up or down to accommodate many different types of goals so they can use for they can be used for entire company goals they can be used for you know family goals or individual goals um, the smart goal setting method is probably the most popular one that you're going to hear I'm sure you've heard of it before uh, but we're going to get a little bit we're going to dive a little bit deeper into um, smart goal setting and the different components within it um, but SMART stands for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. So having SMART goals is, um, you know, the way to, to set them and achieve them. So why set a, set a goal using the SMART framework? You use that SMART framework because when you clearly define that scope and the timeline for your goal from the outset, so once you get started and you're helping define these things that you're trying to achieve, you're better set up for success. So having this really defined framework um, to, to not only keep yourself accountable, to make sure it's measurable, um, you know exactly what success should look like. Um, so that's an introduction to the SMART goal setting method. And then Ellie, we actually had a question come up in the chat. And I, we, can, we can use this goal setting to kind of talk about um, Wendy's question. So Wendy asked, how do you suggest we work on mental boundaries during COVID? So I, I 
I would actually highly recommend using this smart goal setting framework. And so Ellie, I'll kick it off and then um, help to balance me out here. But so depending on, on what the specific goal is you're looking to hit, so say, you know, me mental boundaries. So you're looking to disconnect at the end of the day. You don't want to continue. I, I'll use something that's common at Kazoo. We're having employees who are struggling to stop work and move on to kind of handle their own personal things and, and just kind of make sure that they're drawing their line between work and what's going on. So, so Wendy, if you were to use the smart setting framework, right, specifically, what is it that you're looking to kind of create the boundary for? So I might say, hey, I'm looking to end, um, I'm looking to draw the line between my work day and my, the rest of my day, right? My, my evenings. I'm looking to draw the line between my work day and, you know, getting my kids ready or, or cooking dinner or something like that, getting my evening started. So what's your specific goal that you're looking to do? And then how do you measure yourself on that? So for me, I might be looking to draw that boundary. And so measure, I'm going to measure myself and say, hey, by 6 p.m. every day, I want to make sure that I turn my computer off, that my, um, we use a, an intercompany communication tool called Slack, right? That I've turned the notifications of my intercompany um, communication tool, I've turned the notifications off. What are those measurable results that let me know I'm hitting that specific goal? Now with those measurable results, you wanna make sure they're attainable. So as I'm listing those out, let's just make sure, right, that I'm not saying, you know what, Danya, I, I wanna draw the line by 4 p.m. That might be less attainable for me. So I wanna make sure that I'm also being realistic about the measurable results that I'm setting forth. You also wanna make sure they're very relevant to your goal. So if I'm talking about kind of creating that boundary at the end of my day, let's just make sure I'm not grouping um, things that aren't relevant to that goal. Like, um, I'm trying to think, what wouldn't be relevant to that goal that I could throw in there, Ellie? To, um, you know, signing off at six and kind of yeah. disconnecting yourself, you're saying? Yeah. Wouldn't be relevant. Um, that's a really hard one. I'm trying to think of an I example of what, you know, what um, wouldn't be relevant. Eating are, breakfast. Are you ever eating on breakfast. call? Are you ever on call? Would that yeah. make it not realistic? There you go. So that's, that's a great one. So make what makes that not relevant? And then timely. So making sure, um, and we talk about this a little bit when we talk about the importance of goal setting, making sure that those, those measurable results that you're putting forth um, when you talk about the specific goals you want to achieve, that there's some sort of time boundary, that there's a way for you to achieve them in a reasonable amount of time. And you know yourself better than anyone. So if you're somebody who loves longer term goals and is really focused on big strategic things, then maybe your tolerance for, for timely goals and goals that exceed out past a year is different than somebody who might say, no, I love, you know, I'm, I'm better with getting quick gratification. Maybe then your goals are more immediate or more short term, right, within the next month or couple months. And so that's a really great way to kind of think about even just mental boundaries in this time and, and how you use that smart goal setting to kind of help achieve those. Yeah, exactly. You need to make sure you're um, realistic with, with not only yourself, but uh, for, the, for the goals that you're setting. And so that's, that's the best way to really look at um, defining it so that you're, you're working in, within your mental boundaries, just as, as Donya had described with that example. Um, so thank you. Thank you for asking that, Wendy. We appreciate it. Um, and so I've already gone over the remainder of the slides, so I'll jump right into uh, the SMART goals and what they stand for. Um, of course, I've already gone over the traditional, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. Um, but what you see in parentheses here is uh, additional versions of the SMART goal setting method. So you'll probably hear all the different types. Um, but whichever one resonates with you, that's the one that you should um, you know, use whenever you're building these goals using this SMART method. Um, so as you can see, specific can also be simple, sensible, significant. Uh, measurable can be meaningful or motivating. Uh, achievable is agreed and attainable. Relevant is reasonable, realistic, and resource results based. And then time bound is uh, time based, time limited, uh, time slash cost limited, etc. Um, so whichever one resonates with you the most. Um, so let's start with the S in smart. So specific. 
So your goal should be really clear and specific. Otherwise, you won't really know what to be focusing on. So you don't know where to focus your effort efforts, you won't be really motivated for this goal uh, and to achieve it. So when drafting your goal, you want to try to answer the five W questions uh, regarding specific in the SMART goal setting method. Um, so you need to ask yourself, what do you want to accomplish? You need to ask yourself, why is this goal important to yourself? Wh who is involved within this goal? Where is it located? And which resources or limits are involved? Um, so there's a good bit to think about uh, to ensure that your, your goal is specific enough, um, but hopefully asking yourself these five questions will help you define um, and really flesh out your goal to be very specific in helping you, you know, go towards that target. So a good example of this is imagine that you're currently an HR executive and you want to become head of HR. So a specific goal that you could set for yourself would be, I want to gain the skills and experience necessary to become head of HR within my organization so that I can build my career and lead a successful team. That is a really, really specific goal um, because it's, it's, saying, it's stating exactly what I want to accomplish. Um, it's stating why it's important. It's stating who is involved, so I myself am involved with this goal. Um, it's located at the organization I'm at currently, so wherever I work already, um, and which resources or limits are involved. Uh, and this has to do with the skills and experience necessary that you're, you're trying to gain to become this head of HR within your organization. Um, so that is an example of specific. Um, well, I'm going to move on to... Ooh, I no, oh, no, I was just going to say, Ellie, one thing that I would note, too, with... Um, smart goals and just goal setting in in general is this is obviously a really great framework for everyone to kind of continue to iterate on to make your goals better and better and better um, i think it can be daunting if you're um if you're starting to set goals for yourself that you'll have to hit every one of these items so i'd encourage you all to keep it simple to start if, if you're new to goal setting and you know this is something you'd like to do um, you know, do keep it simple. Um, and then you'll find as you start to set more goals, as you start to accomplish goals, this will start to become much more intuitive um, and will come a bit more naturally. Um, but I would encourage you if you're new to goal setting to start simple. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Start, start simple whenever you're, you're starting off. So thank you. Thank you for adding that in, Donya. Yeah. Um, and just a heads up, everyone, if you do have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat, um, or if you feel comfortable, you can, you can ask them um, openly, but it's entirely up to you. Just wanted to make sure you had that option. So moving on to M, so measurable. Um, it's important to have measurable goals, not only so you can track the progress, but also stay motivated. Um, this helps you assess the progress that you've already made, um, and also helps keep you focused for what else you're trying to achieve to help you meet deadlines um, and feel the excitement of getting closer to achieving your goal. Um, a measurable goal should address questions such as how much, how many, um, and how will I know when it's accomplished? Um, so I, I personally think that um, measurable, the measurable portion of SMART goals is probably one of the most important aspects of the goal setting method. Um, just because it really, really fleshes out exactly what you're accomplishing and how you're going to accomplish that exactly. Um, and so this would be the smaller portions within your goal, so the different things that you're going to be checking off to achieve to get to this bigger goal. Um, so an example might be uh, you might measure your goal of acquiring the skills to become head of HR by determining that you will have completed the necessary training courses and gain the relevant experience within five years time. Um, obviously, I can only fit so much in this slide, so I wasn't able to uh, put exact examples, but some examples that would be measurable within this particular goal would be, you know, I want to attend uh, three conferences within five years. I want to go to three webinars per month to really gain experience and expand my knowledge. Um, so having the how much and how many, this is really helping you flesh out your goal. Um, and it's, it's able to make it more measurable to, you know, check those boxes off. Ooh. Let's see. Sorry, we got a question in there. It looks like it's a private message, but that is uh, measurable within the SMART goal setting method. 
One thing I will say here too, Ellie, and I don't know if you feel this way, I'm actually thinking of one of your direct reports when they first started goal setting and some of their goals weren't quite as measurable and you had to work with them quite a bit on the, the person kept getting discouraged because they weren't feeling like they were accomplishing their goals. And so Ellie took some time and was sitting down with this employee and it turns out they really didn't have many tangible, measurable results that, that came after their goal. And so Ellie really had to work with them to, to be very specific because that, that helps with that sense of accomplishment. And so I will say if you're goal setting and you're starting to feel like you can't quite hit um, certain goals, you might want to take a look at those measurable results and make sure that you're following kind of how much, how many, how will I know when it's accomplished, putting that lens on how you're measuring yourself against your goals. Exactly, exactly. Like it may, it may feel silly to tell yourself to, you know, attend three webinars per month and, you know, go to one conference a year. Um, but by, you know, making it that granular, it, it really does help you feel like you're succeeding in that goal setting process because you can check those items off. Um, and one thing uh, about the, the measurable aspect is once you set the goal, it's not set in stone. Um, you can always update it if you feel like the, the amount that you've set is too much, you can lower it. If it's not enough, you can increase it um, and you can add to it. So, so again, these goals are not set in stone. They do grow as you grow. Next is achievable. So with achievable, your goal needs to be realistic and attainable to be successful. So in other words, you should stretch your abilities, but it should still remain a possibility. Um, so when you set these achievable goals, you may be able to identify previously overlooked opportunities or resources that can bring you closer to it. Um, so with, with achievable goal setting, of course, you're gonna, you want to set these goals for yourself that are a, a one year out, three years out, five years out, and that's totally okay. Um, it becomes less achievable if you're setting goals such as, you know, become a, a billionaire in a month. Um, obviously that's, that's not achievable unless you win the lottery, but I wouldn't really base your goals on, on winning the lottery. Um, and so, you know, keeping your goals achievable is super important um, whenever you're setting this goal. Um, so an achievable goal will usually answer questions such as how can I accomplish this goal and how realistic is the goal based on other constraints such as financial factors. So an example of uh, setting an achievable goal would be um, you might need to ask yourself whether developing the skills required to become the head of HR is realistic. Uh, and this is based on both your existing experience and qualifications. For example, do you have the time to complete the required training effectively? Are, you, are the necessary resources available to you? And can you afford to do it? Um, I may want to attend uh, you know, two or three conferences a year, uh, but maybe I can only afford one. Um, and so if that's the case, then I, I shouldn't you know, be putting in there that I need to, to go to three or I won't achieve this goal. Um, or let's say, you know, I need to get um, an HR certification. Uh, let's say I don't have enough experience to be able to even sit to test for this certification. Um, so you need to really step back and ensure that the different portions of your goal are achievable. Um, because if you're, if they're not achievable, then you'll just be stuck, you know, sitting there waiting to achieve these impossible feats. Uh, and so that is the achievable portion of SMART goals. That goes hand in hand uh, a little bit with that example that John, you used earlier about my direct report is um, this person was setting, setting goals that were not only um, very vague, uh, but they were not achievable for, for, them, for themselves. Um, these were things that you know, weren't necessarily something that they could attain just based on budget or they didn't have enough experience to, to even get started on something. So just ensuring that your, your, the pieces of your goal are achievable uh, will keep you motivated. Anything you wanted to add on there before I moved on to the R in SMART, Danya? No. Awesome. Okay. Perfect. Um, so R, relevant. So this step is about ensuring that your goals matter to you and that it aligns with other relevant goals that you may have. Uh, we all need support and assistance in achieving our goals, but it's important to retain control over them. So make sure that your plans drive your goals forward. Um, you don't necessarily have to set a single goal for yourself. You can set many goals, uh, but making sure they're relevant to your life, 
to your career, to um, the other goals that you've set, maybe even your family. They need to be relevant uh, for what you're trying to achieve. Um, and they, they have to all kind of make sense in the grand scheme of things uh, next to your other goals. So a relevant goal can answer yes to these questions. Does this goal seem worthwhile? Uh, is this the right time to set this goal? Does this match our other efforts and needs? So my other efforts and needs, and am I the right person to reach this goal? Um, that last bullet point probably is more so to do with the, uh, like a team-based goal, uh, but I did wanna leave it in there just in case, you know, that is something that you ever set is a goal with a group of people, let's say your, your family or your coworkers. So they need to be relevant um, compared to one another. So an example of this would be, you might wanna gain the skills to become a head of HR within your organization, but is it the right time to undertake the required training or work toward additional qualifications? Are you sure you're, that you're the right person for the head of HR role? Um, so that's something that you need to do is you really need to step back and see if, if it's the right time. Um, maybe you have other things in the work right now. Maybe you're thinking of moving across the state or across the country or even out of the country. Maybe you're thinking of growing your family. Maybe you're thinking of, I don't know, adopting five dogs. Maybe, maybe the things that don't feel like they apply to your goals, um, they can become distracting and the things that happen in your life are really relevant to how you set your goals. So just make sure that the goals that you're setting are relevant to what you're trying to succeed in and you know, match up with your life and how it's, what's happening in your life right now. Um, and so that's, that's the relevant portion of SMART goal setting. Um, anything else that you wanted to add in there? Or does anybody have any questions on this slide before I move on? Awesome. Perfect, so I will go to the last portion of SMART goal setting, which is time bound. So every goal needs a target date. So that means you have to have a deadline so that you can focus on working towards something. Um, this part of the SMART goal criteria helps to prevent everyday tasks from taking priority over your longer term goals. Um, whether it's a goal that's you know, a week long, a day long, maybe even months or years long, it needs to be time bound um, so that you are able to keep yourself motivated, so you can keep yourself accountable um, to be able to reach these goals. Maybe even if it's you know, a 10 year goal, it's still time bound and it feels like it's you know, so far away, but having that time bound portion of your goal is super, super important for motivation. So a time bound goal will usually answer these questions. When, so when exactly are you trying to achieve this goal? Um, what can I do six months from now? What can I do six weeks from now? And what can I do today? Um, and so these are all the different portions within that goal because I understand, you, you have to understand that if you set a five or 10 year goal, um, there are still different portions that lead up to it and you need to understand, um, you know, the different measurable results within the goal um, can be time bound in and of themselves as well. So you can set time boundaries um, as the, within the smaller portions of your goal to build up to the bigger goal. So an example of this would be gaining the skills to become head of HR may require additional training or experience as we mentioned earlier. So how long will it take you to acquire these skills? Do you need further training so that you're eligible for certain exams or qualifications? It's important to give yourself that realistic time frame for accomplishing the smaller goals that are necessary to achieving that final objective. Um, so like I said earlier, um, just you know, giving yourself these time frames. Um, I had a, a personal example in which, uh, you know, I, I had a particular goal within um, a semester. So I just actually finished up um, getting my degree. And so I, I, a goal that I would set for myself would be, oh, thank you. <laughs> a goal that I would set for myself would be, you know, I want to get an A in this course. Uh, and so to do that, I knew that the exact goal was uh, four and a half months because that's how long the semester was. Um, so that was the overarching time bound goal. And within that, I had the different subgroups. Um, so I gave myself um, different time bounds. So I wanted to read chapter one by this Saturday. I wanted to read chapter two by next Saturday. Um, so even something as granular as, as reading those, those chapters within that goal was part of my time bound goal. Um, other things were, um, I want to, study for 
five hours this week and I need to do that by the end of this week. Uh, and so I could tell myself that I would, you know, study Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and I would get those five hours off. So just having time bound goals in the smaller goals of your larger goal is really the biggest part of achieving those goals and, and showing yourself that you're really accomplishing this and, and building up towards that bigger thing. Um, so that is time bound. Any questions on time bound before I move on to our next section? Yeah, um, Ellie? Yeah. Um, hi, I'm Piper. Um, so I recently had a mentor give me ideas on things I could do to further my career, my personal brand and stuff like that. And so it like among them is like, um, an hour of what he calls boot camp a day where I focus on learning something about this, um, write a blog post a week, produce a webinar once every three months, you know, things like that. But this is making me realize there's no, how could I make that into a time bound thing? Because this is just like an all overall general thing that I should do. So I can't, I've, as you've been talking about this, I've been trying to think of how to make this a time bound thing and I can't, mm -hmm. do you have any ideas? For, um, for furthering your career, correct? Is that what you're answering, uh, asking? Yeah. I would say, um, you know, you, you have to start with an estimate. Um, so making it time bound. So maybe you tell yourself that you want to earn a promotion in the next six months. Okay. And so as part of that, that means, you know, every evening, you, by the end of each week, you've completed five hours of, of learning. So you, you've gone through and you've learned some more. Um, you've set time bound uh, areas for, you know, building a webinar. So you said that you tried to build a webinar per month. Um, so you've got those smaller things that build up into this larger goal. Um, and while you, your goal may be to get promoted in six months, if it, if it doesn't happen in six months, maybe it happens in seven, but being able to give yourself this time bound to help yourself build up to it is, is the best way to go for it because you don't know when it's, when it's going to happen. Right. Um, and that's okay. Like these goals can be, be changed. They shouldn't be changed every time you're challenged by your goals, mm -hmm. uh, but life happens and, and that's okay. Um, so would you say, would you say you're trying to get promoted in six months to a year? Is that, is that what feels what you're trying to build up to? Actually, I'd like to be employed <laughs> in six months to a year. Um, I, I'm, I'm employed at the moment, but it's more of a customer service thing than, um, than what I want to be into. So I want to like grow so that I can be much, become more qualified to do community management stuff. Gotcha. So you're more concentrated on becoming more knowledgeable and being employed within that particular area, correct? Yes. Yeah. Um, so I, I have a good example from my, my own life, actually, um, with something like that. So I, uh, back in um, mid-20-teens, mid I'm trying to remember exactly what year, I was employed in a, in a CS role, so a customer support role. I worked in tech support. Mm -hmm. I, I sat on a phone and I, I helped people with their questions. Um, and I told myself, I want to get into HR. Like, that's what I want to do. That's what I'm going to achieve. And so I told myself that that's what I was going to do. And then I started from there. Mm -hmm. um, and I told myself that I need to um, read, you know, a book a month. On, on different HR practices and policies. I want to um, you know, expand my education. And so I looked at different options for myself in particular, uh, what I wanted to do in, in terms of you know, going back to school. Did I want to get uh, just a certification? Did I wanna get an associate's degree? Um, and so I ended up just deciding to go back and, and get my MBA because I felt like that would be the most applicable and I didn't wanna pigeonhole myself in case I wasn't as into HR as I thought. Mm -hmm. um, the next thing that I told myself was uh, I need to find an entry level position in an HR role or something as close to HR as I can. Um, and so I began applying for HR internships. I applied for um, executive assistant roles, um, office management roles, anything that had to do with HR and as close to HR as I could get, that's what I was applying for. Um, and so it felt 
it felt it feels very gray and scary to be setting a goal but you know keeping yourself motivated by being true to yourself and understanding what you can achieve but also setting setting those things for yourself like you said like building a webinar or um, you know learning more every evening or for five hours a week um, so keeping yourself motivated and keeping yourself accountable until you reach that goal just because a goal feels like it's out of reach doesn't mean it's impossible mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I never thought I would get into HR because it's so gosh darn hard to find an entry level role. Um, but, but, you know, here, here we are now. And so it's just, you know, I, I achieved that goal and, you know, I've set a new one now. Maybe I do want to take Danya's job. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hello, Danya. Woohoo. I'm all about it. That's what I'm grooming Ellie for actually. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> Too yeah. silly. Hopefully that helps. I know that was a, a, bigger answer than you were probably expecting, but does that help you, Piper? I think it does. I think it does. I am, um, you know, it's like, it's the same kind of thing that you had, you know, it's hard to find an entry level position in what I want to do. It's like, you, you can't get the job until you have experience, but you can't get experience until you have a job. Yeah. So that's where I'm at right now. Yeah. Yeah. So just being, like I said, being true to yourself and learning as much as you can um, and, and, you know, building out your own portfolio in a way is probably the best, best way forward in terms of like community management. Okay, cool. Thank one you other, very much. Oh yeah. Actually, one other thing I'd layer in there, Piper, it sounds like you're already um, chatting and working with somebody on some of these ideas. Um, also chatting with your mentor and saying, you know, what, if you were me, you know, what are some measurable goals? What are some key milestones that I should look to hit um, or accomplish as I'm looking to kind of attain um, what I'm looking to do, right? Or you mm -hmm. kind of moving into a new um, career opportunity. I think um, oftentimes, and I could, because I find myself in a mentorship role so often, I always appreciate when my mentees ask questions like that because it helps me make it very tangible for them. I might have some great ideas about how you should find that role. Um, it's just, we're speaking so high level that mm -hmm. sometimes I forget to make it very very tangible and something that you all can, um, something that the person can work towards. So I would also encourage you to circle back with them as well. All right. Thank you very much. I will. And then uh, one last thing I just thought of, and this is great advice for everybody. Um, before I even thought about getting into HR, I actually reached out to a ton of HR professionals um, within the Austin area um, and just like reached out to them on LinkedIn. And I asked them if it would be okay if I came in and just talked to them about HR. And you'd be surprised that so many people are very open to that. Right now with COVID, it's a little bit different. Um, but I bet a lot of these professionals would be um, even more willing to set up like a, a digital uh, meeting with you over a Zoom or Hangouts, anything. Mm -hmm. um, but just like talking to HR professionals in the field to see where they started or professionals in the field that you're wanting to get into, um, just to understand, you know, where to start because it can feel overwhelming going from zero and looking at a hundred and being like, how do I get there, you know? Right. Uh, right. So reaching out to those professionals on, on like professional networks within networks, uh, maybe your mentor knows people. Um, so just reaching out to people um, and, and networking really. <laughs> right. Yeah. There are people that know me just because they've seen me at a lot of things and they're like, Oh, what do you do? Like, I don't know nothing. <laughs> you know, just because I have, just because they're in jobs and I'm not in, the, in that yet, but um, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Of course, of course. Awesome, so I will move on from SMART goal setting. So during the goal process, what should you be doing um, once you set your goals? So you set these clear and challenging goals, um, you need to ask for feedback along the way and then monitor, evaluate and adapt. I'm gonna go over each of these steps, but I just wanted to give you a uh, kind of precursor of what we would be going over in just a moment. So number one, set clear and challenging goals. So when your goals are clear, you know what you're trying to achieve. You can also measure results accurately. And so you know when to reward yourself. So you're checking off these boxes along the way, you're celebrating your achievements. Um, so this is why using that SMART method to create the goals is useful, just because you've fleshed it all out. Um, so take special care to ensure that your goals aren't too complex or too easy. Ensure the goal is challenging enough, but not so challenging it can't be achieved. I think I threw in some examples of, of something too complex and too simple. I did. Perfect. So some examples. 
of something that's too complex, too simple, and then just right. So um, a too complex goal would be, I want to be a CHRO by the time I'm 30 and work at a Fortune 500 company that's located in New York whose name starts with an A. So obviously that's a little too complex. Um, you may be able to achieve some of those things, but I wouldn't make it such a specific goal that it, it feels impossible to reach. <laughs> um, so that is what I would consider a too complex of a goal. Um, next example would be, I work in HR and I wanna continue to do so. So that's, uh, that's too simple. So that would be, you know, why would you even set that goal in the first place? You just wanna continue to be employed. Um, so that's, that's not usually something you'd set as a goal because you want to, you know, shoot for the stars with goal setting in most cases. Um, so I want to gain the skills and knowledge necessary to become a CHRO in five years. And that's just right. Obviously, there's more portions of that that flesh out underneath it, but that's a really good start to have a really solid foundation uh, and just, you know, just right. Next is ask for feedback along the way. So your goals don't have to live in a vacuum. You don't have to keep your goals secret. I know that it, it might feel embarrassing to show others what your goals are, but ask others for feedback, whether it's your friends, spouse, partner, coworkers, or manager. Um, so by asking for this feedback, you can get help structuring your goals. Uh, and it's a great way to be held accountable by someone other than yourself. If you share your goals with others, um, they not only get to celebrate with you, but they can help, you know, keep you accountable and keep you motivated um, because they, they know what you're trying to achieve and they understand the importance and significance to you, but also the grand scheme of things. Um, so asking for feedback along the way is super important within the goal setting method. I think that Donya and I review my goals, gosh, um, at least once a week uh, because I have to, to update the different things that I've achieved throughout um, the, the quarter. Uh, and so because of that, we actually review my, my goals on a pretty regular basis. And so um, while I ask for feedback from her, um, sometimes I talk to, let's say, my partner about personal goals that I want to achieve. And so he knew that I wanted to go back to school and I wanted to get my degree and I wanted to work in HR. And he helped celebrate with me along the entire way. And he helped motivate me and, and held me accountable, even if he wasn't necessarily nagging me to get these things done, um, he understood how important it was to me and he understood the milestones that I was reaching within that goal. And then last but not least, monitor, evaluate, and adapt. So it's super important to review your, your goals periodically and make adjustments, adjustments or modifications as necessary. Sometimes plans or aspirations change and that's okay. I mentioned this earlier, but goals are not set in stone. I'm not saying that you should change them every time they challenge you, but they should be updated as, as plans and aspirations change. And like I said, and that's, that's totally okay to update your goals as, as you grow, as you understand a little bit more what you know, the goal is that you're trying to accomplish, um, updating them along the way uh, is totally fine. Keeping your goals updated as you make progress. So cross things out, check off the boxes. You'd be amazed at how much this keeps you motivated. Um, I love taking a look at my goal progress because, you know, maybe I, you know, am lacking in one goal. I'm, you know, kicking butt in the other and I'm about 85% complete. And it just helps me feel very motivated because I can see my progression um, through the weeks and the months and the years. And I can look back and say, you know, hey, I accomplished these things. I moved these over, I, I, I did it. And so, you know, checking off those boxes is a really, really great exercise for, um, you know, getting things done and then celebrating. Setting up a regular cadence where you review accomplishments or challenges with achieving your goals. So depending on the goals timeframes, it could be weekly, monthly, quarterly, um, et cetera. So if it's a longer term goal, maybe you set a five year goal, you probably wanna review that every month or two, um, just because that's, those are things that you're not doing every day. If it's a goal that is, let's say a three month goal or a six month goal, that's something that you'd want to uh, review on about a weekly basis, just so you can check those boxes off, you can update them as necessary, um, you can take off things that aren't relevant. Um, so just, you know, these, these goals are almost like a living, breathing thing that, you know, progress with you. And as long as you're, you're keeping yourself accountable and, and checking off those boxes, um, it's, it's a really great feeling and, and you'll achieve those goals faster just by keeping yourself motivated. 
So goal setting tips for success. So the first goal setting tip, this is just, a, these are just overarching goal setting tips um, that, that Johnny and I came up with. But um, like I said, goals are not set in stone. Goals change and grow just like you do. Um, you shouldn't alter them every time you feel challenged, but sometimes situations and priorities change and that's totally fine. Setting a goal and working towards it, even if you don't end up checking every box, is an important part of progressing both professionally and personally. I've set tons of goals. Um, in my life. I've, I've even set more recently goals that I wasn't able to achieve. Um, and that's okay. And things change. 2020 happens. Um, you know, we didn't expect uh, COVID, the pandemic that happened. We didn't expect the economic impact that happened. Um, and, you know, because of this, some of my goals changed. And, and that's okay. Like, life happens. Um, and, and just, you know, keeping yourself motivated and updating those goals and changing them based on the situation is super important. Uh, next is goals shouldn't be a checklist of things to do. So making your goals a mixture of realistic expectations and future aspirations. So if you're not challenging yourself in some way, you probably aren't growing. Um, and so I know we had just talked about checking off the boxes, crossing things out. Um, of course, that makes sense. But this is more so like you shouldn't be setting things that as part of your goal, you shouldn't be setting things that you're already doing, you should be setting things that you aspire to do, or you're working your way up to do. Um, so yes, of course, it's a mixture of realistic things, but don't forget, you know, what you're trying to achieve in the future. And last but not least, envision the house, then draw the blueprint. blueprints. Um, setting a longer term goal can really be huge. So if you're setting a, a larger goal, such as, you know, become a, an executive in HR or um, get several promotions in, in five years, it can feel like a lot. So by stepping back to really understand what you're trying to achieve, if it's relevant to you, if it's even achievable, um, is a really important part of this goal setting process because some people kind of just start and then they stop because they say, you know, I, I don't think I can achieve that. It's too hard. I, I don't want to do that. And so by stepping it back and envisioning that house and then drawing the blueprint, so all of the miniature things that you're trying to do to build up to that is a really important part of that goal setting process. So imagine what you ultimately want to achieve first and then start breaking it down into smaller, more manageable steps. So by creating these simpler steps that are part of the whole, you won't feel as overwhelmed by imagining the big picture because you know exactly what you have to work on. Um, some people are motivated by those really large overarching goals and some people are motivated by tasks and that's okay. Maybe you are one of those people that does have a task list to achieve every day, every week, every month. Um, sometimes people need that and so by breaking it down into manageable pieces like that um, is the best way to do it. Any questions before I move on? Awesome. Perfect. Um, and remember, my last tip, even if a goal isn't a win, it can teach us a lot. In fact, sometimes the goals we miss teach us the most. So like I said, I've set a lot of goals. I think I've only hit 100% on about half of them. But knowing that I was working towards those goals and things change still keeps me motivated to achieve my future goals. Um, and then I did want to let everyone know that we've got a, a smart goal setting template that we're happy to share with you all just to get started. Um, it includes the uh, what the SMART stands for in SMART goal setting, um, but I'm happy to go back and take a look at that slide just so uh, just some people reached out to me to just look at that again. Um, but that does kind of um, finish up our presentation on goal setting. Mm -hmm.